Hey everyone, today we've got for you uh, some Case and Case Family Related brands. Um, and what I mean by Case Family Related is back in the early, early days of the company, they, they were the Case Brothers, uh, Job Case, I think was, there are a bunch of brothers, sisters, everyone was in the cutlery family. So before they merged into one thing, you ended up with, uh, one was making Crandall, one was making kinfolks, one was making et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you get people collecting case family brands along with case brands. Uh, this is all very, very old stuff, by the way. But the first up, we have a super rare. This is a case bro, so we're talking uh, 1910, 1915 era, somewhere in there. They only use the stamp for a couple years. This is one of the most desirable patterns, the sunfish. And you see this one's got great snap. Great half stops. I haven't seen a better example of that knife at all in books or otherwise. You almost never see these. Uh, this guy's got no chips or cracks, which is, is just unbelievable. You see great snap on these blades. Maybe a little bit of peak here. Not bad. Uh, again, it's better than the book, so it's a beauty. All right, moving on, guys. We have our first family brand. This is a case family crandall knife crandall cutlery this one there's a whole book of stamps on these like stamp one two three four five i don't know all of them that well but it's in the 1910 to 20 era i do know this one from a book so i know it's one of the case family ones if i remember right some of these companies contracted out so not all of the the case family knives were actually made by case and that makes a huge difference in price this guy by crandall you could tell is, is early case and you could tell pretty easily by looking at these two together. You see that worm groove pattern? They're pretty similar. So you see something totally wacky different that looks like a whole different company? It probably is. So there's the Crandall guys again. Great half stop, great snaps. Blade is full or close to full. There's a the rear scale. I don't see any chips or cracks. I don't see any daylight. Um, this one looks all original to me, guys. All right. Next up, one of my favorite case patterns. We have a tested era. That's 1920 to 40. The way I can tell that is by the tang stamp here. If you guys can see this, I'll try to, to kind of reflect it back and forth. You always want to see this, this C here circling over the top of the A and coming down. Um... If it ever stops short, if you just see like a, a normal looking C and not a, a long tailed C as they call it, that's going to be fake every time. Don't buy it. It's always, always going to be fake. That C needs to go over the top. I mean, it can be worn like this from, uh, from liner wear and stuff like that. It can be brand new looking because someone ground it, but it's never short like that. Anyway, onto the copper head. We've got green bone here, which is almost, it looks untouched to me. No chips, no cracks. Super rare pattern. The blades are probably 95% in this guy. I'm gonna lay it out that way for you a little bit, maybe. You see, it's a really, really desirable pattern. Uh, green bone is some of the most desirable in case, and this is a, a just a super nice knife. It looks all original to me. We have a tiny, tiny bit of separation here, but I don't think that's from anything being apart. I think that's just natural separation. Super nice knife. Okay, guys, we've got one that is one of my favorites. This is a early Kinfolks, a winter bottom premium stockman. I know that's a, a mouthful. What I mean by that is winter bottom bone. You can tell that by this kind of, this, this mottled look it has and this wavy pattern. Or if you guys want to visualize it, just type in queen winter bottom in Google and you'll see a ton of it in fake and real bone. It all kind of looks along this line though. Premium stockman, all I mean by that is these fancy bolsters. It's the other side, this one's beautifully kept. I think it was cleaned at some point. This looks like early case winter bottom to me. I could be wrong though, because you just don't see that stuff that often. But case did use this bone material prior to tested and a little bit in tested era, I think. You guys see that Klaus Fremont stamp there? This is model 21. 
doesn't necessarily signify anything and even with case it wasn't always important up until 1940 or so when those model numbers became really standardized there's another look at that this way guys it's a gorgeous knife all of these knives so far guys are, are pretty much maybe minus that copper header are basically i mean they're one-offs are very hard to find uh, next up we've got a rough example but Still, uh, one that exists, and you don't see the stamp often in a green bone toothpick. We can see this guy's had a repair up here, but someone did use bone. Green bone scale on the back looks really good. It's got that closed C shield, and what I mean by that, guys, for tested and prior, you want to see that C kind of closing in. You don't want to see, see it open, because that, that signifies a 1940 or later knife. So there's your closed C. But, yeah, I know it's been on a grinder and all that stuff, guys, but Case Bradford, you don't see it very often. We could still see a model number, which would be 610096, I think, for a large toothpick. Super rare knife. What some people do, guys, if you wanted to, to make this guy whole again, there are folks out there that can take this blade off, attach a whole new blade to the top, um, maintaining this part, and then you would have a, an original size knife no it wouldn't be the original blade but i mean it, a lot of these things are kind of they're kind of parts and pieces if you guys know what i'm saying okay so five inches total on that one it's a beauty and someone loved this guy you could tell that it, you just don't see repairs like that very often they're usually more lazy okay here we have a pre-tested era a little green bone fob. Very nice. You're not going to see these often. If you guys can see the kind of translucence of that green bone, it's very, very nice. Blades are full on this one. This master blade doesn't have much snap, but I think it might regain a little with a lot of pivot work. Maybe. And there's our pick, our grooming tool. And we can see on here it says 62101R. Um, so it being pre-tested with that stamp on it, I'm thinking, uh, probably Bradford or maybe WR case. There was a period when they, so they had stamps with no model number, then they skipped. Then again, they had stamps with no model number, then they skipped. And then again, so it's these periods of a couple years, you'd see model numbers, then model numbers and stamps that are totally different. So not to carry on too much guys, but. It's a, it's a little guy, it's got the fob for the keychain, uh, super nice. These ones are some of my favorites because they just don't survive so much. People actually might have used these more than the big ones because they had them on their keychain and whatnot. All right guys, next up we have a, a more modern, but a classic, 1940 to 64, medium Congress. Let me just open this up for you guys. This one's seen use, but it's still got some life left to it. It's got that nice, almost reddish stag uh, on the rear scale, the front scale. I don't know why it's common with some companies. You see that smooth front. I always like that textured look to stag, but maybe some people don't. And there you go right there, guys. You don't see these in stag that often. I mean, they're not impossible to find, but a lot of these case knives were used. You can see the way I know 1940 to 64 is it's his case, one line, XX, one line. And that's the only way you'll ever see it, 1940 to 64. Prior to 1950, there was no model number. So you'll see a lot of these XX, no model number, green bone. Then you've got an earlier model. It's worth maybe 20% more than the same model in, uh, in a 1950 or later. Well, super nice used but acceptable case congress knife here guys we'll put it down there these guys are three and some odd three and a quarter inches three and a half inches something like that i don't see any chips oh wait maybe a tiny chip here this this kind of texture it almost looks like cracking it's just natural stag wear guys these things weren't oiled and such you know obsessively almost they, they started to show somewhere you can buff this out i like how it looks but check out that rear scale that that's where the money is i think Okay, I'll try to get through these a little bit faster, guys. 
We've got a 1965 to 69, nice little red bone pen knife. I know it's 65 to 69 because we have case XX in one line now and USA in one line. Nothing below that guys, no dots or anything, just case XX, USA. We know that it's 1965 to 69. And thank you Case for doing that because they're really the only company out there that gives us a, an easy way to date everything to, to a year almost. And now their current stuff, you can date it to a year and a month a lot of times. Here's the fun one guys, a tested era. It's called a Christmas tree celluloid pen knife, a serpentine pen knife. You see this type of celluloid in, in knives that are still current. A lot of German knives have this nowadays. In case you don't see it that often, and it, in their early stuff, it's really desirable. You can see, again, this stamp is really good. What I was talking about, that circle C coming over the top here, guys. You see how it comes over the top and long tail underneath the bottom there? You always want to see that. This one is really clear because this knife doesn't have much use. They, it might look a little bit different, but it's always got to have those characteristics or there's something off about it. And once you see a couple, you know, it'll be fine. See, this guy's got snap on both blades. I don't see any chips or cracks. Nice active scales. A little bit of pitting, but I mean, acceptable. Uh, better than acceptable, I think. Next up, we got another Case family. This is a Charles Platts or C. Platts knife. He was a relative somewhere in that Case family chain. I could find out if you guys want to know. This is a little uh, tadpole or bear head jack pattern. Case made a, a tadpole knife that looked like this. Um, tadpole is just a nickname. A little two and a half inch small jackknife. You can see this one looks kind of rough. Someone's probably tried to grind it or do whatever to it. It's got that plat stamp coming across it. It doesn't look really great. But it being a, a Case family product and having that, that original look to it, is, is, it's almost better. You know, you want it to show somewhere in some age. You don't want it to look perfect. So to me, with this one, I wouldn't do anything to it. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could bring it back to looking almost like a brand new knife. I believe this is faux tortoise shell, by the way. So celluloid on that one. So your back springs here. Let me get you one more picture of that tang stamp too, guys. It's kind of hard to see. See, it just says plats and it's in a weird diagonal. That's totally fine. Early stuff like this, you don't want to see. Uh, you don't want to see it looking too clean. People weren't making this stuff to be collected. It's supposed to be used. All right, guys. We've got a 1940 to 64 again red bone. It's a pattern 83. You can see this bone is worn down quite a bit. Let me show you another one. Like if you see the, the jigging pattern on, on this old green bone here, you can see this has been pocket worn, I would say. But I kind of like that look. It kinda, you can get a really high shine on it. You see the back's got a, a crack coming along here. Oddly though, whoever owned this, it seems like they carried a lot, but they never used it possibly. I don't know. Whatever happened to it, they left us with very full blades, which I'm happy for. See that guy there, guys? Here's your pattern number, 6383. And case patterns, guys, the six designates the handle material, six being bone for this one. Three is the number of blades. So a six three, you've got, we know a pattern six, bone, three blades. And then it continues, the 83 is the pattern or the style of the knife, the swell center whittler in this one. And if you look at more case knives, you'll see a five and a seven, and they correspond to stag and corian and all this other stuff. But just keep that in mind in case you see a six in something that's got a plastic handle, you know, buyer beware. All right, guys, we've got another in that same pattern Congress, same era, a little bit more rough. This is a standard bone. It's not real jump out red bone. I call this brown. Um, this guy, I, I don't think it saw much use, but it, it sat and it saw some oxidization. So we've had to take this, and by we, I mean me, gently back through uh, a belt sander, and I just kind of reprofiled it best I could to come back. And whether you guys agree is totally up to you, but I saved this guy the best I could. I'm not messing with the scales at all. We got a little chip here. 
I'm not gonna go grind out the inside or anything. I'm just trying to get it back to to uniform. You know, if you guys want to do something else with it, fine. But this is a, a nice, nice survivor knife. User or a little care, it could be, you know, 100%. So there that is, guy. And you guys can also, I use a, a, a modeling clay called Apoxy Sculpt. It's meant for sculpting and, and things of that, that nature. I find it really good for patching stuff like this, guys, if you ever wanted to mess with it. Um, I can do a video on that stuff if you guys want to. And last but not least, we saw another green bone toothpick. Check this out, guys. So that's a Bradford era, right? And here is a 40 to 64. If you guys see how much bigger this Bradford toothpick is, you can kind of see how Case over the years sort of slimmed themselves down from a, a almost like a big, heavy work knife company to a collector knife company. And it's kind of odd. You don't really see those side by side very often, guys. So this is a 40 to 64 red bone toothpick. Some people will call this pretty red bone or super pretty red bone, maybe. See, it's got two different tones, front and back. I love saying that. It's just natural age. Blade is full. You see the model number on the back here. This one, I don't see a single chip or crack on it, which you almost always see those on the pins on these old toothpicks or, or any other knife for that matter. And I, I don't see any on this one, guys. Great snap. You can see it measured out for length. And one more time from the top. That blade's a tiny bit off center, but I mean, that's, that's just kind of how these things wear sometimes. And let me show you guys, since I was talking about that closed C earlier, so 1940 and past, you see how the C is now open? It's kind of wide mouth. If you see that wide mouth shield on an, on an older, on an older uh, case knife, you know one of many things happened. They replaced the shield, they replaced the blade, or something's not right. So it'll set those triggers off for you guys. So again, it might be hard to see here, but it, it just ends in, a, in an open instead of a closed C. There's other stuff there too that, that would stand out, but just something to keep in mind. Very nice toothpick, guys. And with that, that's the last of my case stuff, and it'll be the end of this video. Again, all this stuff is available on our website, dbcbladesllc.com, and we will have it all listed with current stock status below, guys. So if you see this video and it's not totally current, you'll know that, hey, these products are still available or not available. As always, thank you guys, and I hope you get something from it.